The other big story we're following is in Halifax, where a report from the Federal Justice Department was unsealed today. It concerns Glenn Assoon, a Nova Scotia man who spent 17 years in prison after being wrongfully convicted of murder. The report, which hasn't been seen by the public until now, led to his conviction being overturned. CBC's Brett Ruskin is at the Halifax courthouse and has the details about what's in the Assoon report. Glenn Assoon spent 17 years behind bars and we learned today that some of the information that could have led to his release was deleted from a police database. That's according to documents that were released here from this courtroom uh, after a publication ban was fought against by uh, the CBC News as well as uh, the Canadian Press and the Halifax Examiner. We all worked together to hire a lawyer to fight this publication ban. The publication ban was lifted and in the documents released today, it shows that there was information about an alternate suspect that police had in hand, but then that police deleted in advance of a, an appeal of the conviction of Glenn Assoon. And so the RCMP have said yes. We did have the information. It was deleted, but it was not done with malicious intent. Now, Glenn Assoon, again, was uh, arrested, tried and convicted of the murder in 1995. And uh, throughout the 90s, the, the trial did continue. Uh, the murder of Brenda Way. He spent nearly 17 years in prison, has now been exonerated. Meanwhile, there is no convicted killer of Brenda Way as we speak. Glenn Assoon on his part, he says he spent 17 years behind bars. He is not angry or frustrated because in his 60s, with the time that he has left, he says he doesn't have time for anger. He doesn't have time for frustration. He just wants to live his life now as a free man. Brett Ruskin, CBC News, Halifax. For more on this, we're joined now by Glenn Assoon's lawyer, Philip Campbell. He works with Innocence Canada on cases of wrongful conviction. He is in Paros, Greece today. So now, Philip Campbell, first of all, congratulations on having this wrongful conviction overturned. Uh, I'm curious to know your thoughts about the fact that all these documents now are being made public. What, what do you think about that? Um. Thanks for having me on, Diane. Uh, it, it's a big day for me and my co-counsel and for Glenn Assoon and for Innocence Canada. We've known about this information for five years and uh, we respected the reasons why Justice Chipman kept it sealed, but the uh, public interest arguments in favor of exposing it, spearheaded um, by three media companies, were overwhelming. And the story is a grim one. I, I've done a lot of legal work and a lot of work on wrongful convictions in my career, and I haven't quite seen anything like this. Uh, I, I think there's a massive public interest in having this story told and uh, explored further. We know the bare facts, but we don't know where accountability should lie. And we don't know the question that still puzzles me, which is, why? What, what did these police officers, senior police officers, think would happen when they started pressing delete or ordered frontline criminal profilers to press delete on all this material? It's a bit baffling. Well, one of the, the shocking things that we have been hearing today is that in these documents, it comes clear that, in fact, that there has been another suspect for many, many years. In fact, what our reporter on the scene, Brett Ruskin, was telling us is that the other suspect was a serial murderer. Uh, and you've been aware of this for some time, but uh, the public hasn't known. Is that the situation? Well, it's certainly the public hasn't known it. Here's, here's the striking thing about this. In 2004 through 2006, the appeal lawyer, Jerome Kennedy, was thinking that this man who lived pretty much next door to the scene of the murder and had a lot of things in common with the... Uh, with the modus operandi of the murder and with the uh, appearance of somebody who actually confessed to the murder whilst committing another crime. We knew about that and, and Jerome Kennedy knew about it in the early 2000s and he was pursuing that issue with the Crown. What he didn't know, what we didn't know until these documents were created, was that 
there was a whole line of analysis within within the RCMP and the Halifax Regional Police that the same guy was a top suspect in the crime. And not only that, but the lawyer in the early 2000s during the appeal was asking specifically for that information by name. And yet it was not only destroyed digitally and in hard copy, uh, but nobody told him, even though he was making specific inquiries. And this issue went in clear documented uh, from clear sources, it went right to the top of the Viclass unit in in Ottawa. So now, where, you know, it remains just a head scratcher. Now the RCMP did give a statement to CBC News. Our reporter uh, was mentioning it on CBC News Network earlier, saying that the these delete button that was pressed, as you were mentioning earlier, was not done in a malicious way. It was accidental. What I'm curious to know right now is, are you going to be taking any further steps on behalf of Mr. Assun? What is, what's the next thing to happen here? It's so I, I don't know. It wasn't accidental. It's admitted in the document that your reporters will see that it was not only deliberate but ordered, and not only deliberate and ordered but protested by some of the. Uh, analysts who were required to carry it out. So there's nothing accidental about it. They claim that it's not malicious, and I don't know what that means, because uh, it, it, because if it wasn't malicious, if it was accidental or done in good faith, they could have just admitted it. And instead, the requests from Jerome Kennedy for information about this fellow and about the criminal profiling of him was left completely unanswered hmm. it was so there's nothing innocent about this and so right? you'll be it, pursuing that, legal just, you'll be pursuing legal action then well the legal action that glenn Assun is needed is an acquittal and he's got that what should happen here is that the people who are responsible for the people who did this government officials should be taking the initiative not only to figure out what happened and uh, assign some accountability for it, but yeah, assign, grant some redress to Glenn Assun. He should not have to go through uh, a legal action to, to have the right thing done in the face of overwhelming evidence documented and admitted by the people who perpetrated the the wrong. Okay, so. thank you so much for being with us today. We really appreciate your time.